Hi there, Nick Goldschmidt, winemaker for Goldschmidt Vineyards, Forefathers in Boulder Bank, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about yeast fermentation and malolactic fermentation. Yeast fermentation is when we take sugar, which comes naturally in the grapes, and we ferment it to alcohol, and we do that through yeast. Saccharomyces cerevisiae is a classic yeast that we use for fermenting sugar to alcohol and wine. The second fermentation is what we call malolactic fermentation. Malolactic fermentation, and don't be put off here, malolactic is a bacterial fermentation. It's leuconostoc. Leuconostoc bacteria is safe. It's not harmful like some of the other bacteria that you hear in the press. And we use this to ferment malic acid to lactic acid. Malic acid is a relatively hard acid, as you think of with Granny Smith's and other apples. Lactic acid is a softer, more rounder acid, and we think about that in terms of butter. So people call it malolactic fermentation or ML fermentation, but basically that's what's occurring. All red wines go through malolactic fermentation. Chardonnay, Cabernet, Pinot, Merlot, they all go through malolactic fermentation. Chardonnay typically has done in the past, and these days we use partial malolactic fermentation, full malolactic fermentation, and maybe no malolactic fermentation on Chardonnay. Pinot Grigio or Pinot Gris and Sauvignon Blanc typically do not go through malolactic fermentation. So I'm here to talk a little bit about that. So, it's, in terms of chemistry, real basic chemistry is, if you have two grams of malic acid and you ferment it to lactic acid, it's a half reaction. So one gram of malic acid becomes one gram of lactic acid with the addition of our bacteria. So if you start off with four grams of malic acid, it takes you to two grams of lactic acid. It's, a, it's usually a half reaction. I use, say usually because it depends a little bit about on the soil and the temperature that you do it at will actually affect the speed of this process. One thing I want to explain here is some people get a glass of Chardonnay and they say, oh man, this is a big, fat, buttery Chardonnay. Well, I want to tell you right now is it could be buttery, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gone all the way through malolactic fermentation. Because if I have a wine that has two grams of malic going to one gram of lactic, a wine with four grams of malic going to two grams of lactic, or a wine with six grams of malic going to three grams of lactic, which one is more buttery? Well, this one's going to be more buttery, isn't it? The six gram is going to be more buttery at a three gram than a two gram going to one gram. So it really depends on where you grow the grapes. If you're in a warmer region, you're typically at low malic acids. If you're in a cool region, you'd typically be with higher malic acids. So if you do a malolactic fermentation on a Chardonnay in a cool region, it's typically going to be more buttery. If you do it in a warmer region, it's going to be less buttery. So that's part one. Part two is when do you do the malolactic fermentation? So here you are, you've got a tank and it's fermenting sugar to alcohol, you know, because you've got yeast in here, and yeast is very happy. Now, if you introduce the bacteria into this fermentation before the primary fermentation is finished, so before all the sugar is fermented out, the yeast and bacteria are competing and they'll compete for nutrients and the bacteria actually have a stronger affinity for that nutrient. So the yeast will actually ferment slower and in these instances the bacteria can actually ferment all the way through to lactic before the primary fermentation is finished. Well, the most amazing thing about yeast fermentation is that yeast go, wow, you know, the bacteria is eating all my nutrients and I'm having to slow down in terms of fermentation, but eventually the bacteria runs out of steam, it runs out of malic acid to ferment, and the bacteria die off. Well, that thing that gives us the buttery character or diacetyl is really unique. It actually becomes a nutrient source for the yeast. So the yeast, which have fermented a little bit slower, suddenly have a new nutrient source, and it comes from all this diacetyl that's been produced by the bacteria. So the yeast go, wow, you know, I can ferment again, and starts eating up all that buttery character. So that's, that's one way to ferment it. The other way to ferment it is to say, all right, I'm gonna let the yeast finish their fermentation, and then I'm gonna add the bacteria. So you can imagine the difference between these two scenarios is in this scenario where the bacteria is being introduced during the primary fermentation and the yeast are eating the butter, 
is going to taste less buttery than a wine that will ferment later with the bacteria. So we ferment this one with the yeast, finish the fermentation, then add the bacteria. This wine is going to taste more buttery than this wine. So when somebody says to you, this wine's big and fat, it's got a lot of malolactic on it, you go, hang on a minute, you don't know. It depends on where the grapes come from, how much malic acid it had to start, equals how much lactic it has at the end, and then when did the ferment occur? Did the bacteria get fermented with the yeast or without the yeast? Because these two factors really influence how buttery a wine can be. So don't ever be confused or ever think that because a wine's big and fat and buttery, that it went through malolactic fermentation. It may have gone through a partial fermentation or it may have gone through a full fermentation. You don't know until you talk to the winemaker and ask him about their or her about the styles that they were trying to achieve and where they're getting their grapes from. That's the art of the winemaker when it comes to talking about primary fermentation with yeast and secondary fermentation with malolactic.